Now, Mount Everest is every climber's ultimate dream. Every time mountaineers conquer a new peak, they're thinking, how tall is this compared to the top of the world? As humans, we're fascinated with climbing ever higher. And how high is the highest place on Earth? Just over 29,000 feet, um, plus 29 feet to be exact. But here comes the shocking part. Mount Everest is not the tallest mountain on the blue planet. And wait till you hear about the highest mountain in our solar system. It'll make Mount Everest seem like a dwarf. But first, let's get our bearings right. Altitude is the vertical distance from sea level to any point on Earth. Anyone can easily measure it using a neat little device called an altimeter. If you're in New York, then you are just 33 feet above sea level. Makes sense, the city sits on the Atlantic coast. On the other side, literally, is Leadville, Colorado. I've been there. The town's altitude is over 10,000 feet. That makes it the highest elevated city in the United States. It's a breathtaking place. Actually, you can forgive its residents if they're sometimes short of breath. On a scale of altitude, Mount Everest is the highest you can go. Enough about the human scale of things. Let's take out a huge measuring tape and see how tall the mountains are. Their height is not measured from sea level, but from the mountain's base. This shrinks Mount Everest by more than half. This number can never be exact because it's hard to determine where a mountain's base is. In this category, the title goes to Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Sorry, Everest, you only get a consolation prize. But the mountain in Hawaii isn't a mountain at all. It's a volcano, and an active one, too. Its base lies deep beneath the waves of the Pacific Ocean. Total height of Mauna Loa, just over 30,000 feet. But Earth's champion is on the short side of our solar system. It barely made it to the top 10. Number 9 is Maxwell Mons on Venus. It stands at 36,000 feet tall. The mountain is part of a long range, longer than the Grand Canyon. Scientists first discovered it during the 1960s and named it after a famous British physicist. This guy. Maxwell Mont is the brightest spot on Venus. Scientists guess it's because it's rich in iron. Number 8 on the list is Elysium Mons. This mountain is a volcano in the part of Mars that is littered with record-breaking peaks. A big fish in a small pond, you could say. The mountain's height is near the top level that jetliners fly on Earth. An orbiter discovered Elysium Mons in 1972. But there was one odd thing about this volcano. It had no obvious lava flows on its sides. That's probably the best type of volcano to build your house next to. So if you decide to stay on Mars, then visit another volcano, Pavanus Mons. It is some 5,000 feet higher than Elysium Mons. When we translate its name from Latin, we get Peacock Mountain. Wow, who gave names to these mountains? Peacocks live in warm climates, not on glaciers. Yes, you've heard right. There used to be glaciers on Pavanus Mons. Some scientists even argue that there are glaciers even today. And what are glaciers made out of? Correct, water. The red planet definitely has similarities to Earth. Glaciers also exist on Arcea Mons. This is Mars' second tallest volcano. We'll get to number one, don't worry. But what about the height of Arcea Mons? Just imagine how long the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is and multiply it by four. But you wouldn't want to drive anywhere near this mountain. It's home to a weird weather phenomenon. Every year, a dust cloud forms on its slopes. And this is not your everyday sandstorm. This cloud is more than 600 miles long. Tired of Mars a bit? Okay, let's travel to Jupiter. Sadly, there aren't any mountains here since it's a gas giant. But one of its moons, Io, has some pretty interesting peaks. They're all connected by a plateau. That's a raised piece of real estate. The highest peak has a simple name, South. <laughs> it's higher than most volcanoes on Mars. But it has one strange feature. 
One of the mountain slopes is at a 40-degree angle. Not a place where a designated driver wants to be. The slope on Io is so sharp that scientists believe it's the aftermath of a landslide. I mean, what else? Now, back to Mars. The planet seems to be a hot spot for tall mountains. At number 4, we have Acreus Mons. Again, it's not a mountain but a volcano. Its caldera alone is 11,000 feet deep. That's the huge gaping hole at the top of the volcano. The same spacecraft that discovered Elysium Mons found this formation as well. That's the volcano without any lava flows, remember? In 1971, Mariner 9 took a photo of Mars during a sandstorm. There was an interesting spot in the photo. Scientists weren't very imaginative and named it the North Spot. Once the dust had settled, they realized it was a mountain. So that's how Acreus Mons got its name two years later. Now, you know that planet with a ring around it, like my bathtub? Yes, it's Saturn. We're not interested in the planet itself, but in one of its moons. There lives the bronze medalist of the High Mountain Olympics. It is actually not a single mountain, but a ridge with peaks well over 65,000 feet. The ridge runs around the planet's equator. Other planets have equators too, don't think we're that special. The equator is the line that runs around the middle of any celestial body. But this Saturn's moon is everything but ordinary. It has a giant crater that makes it look like something straight out of Star Wars. Coming in hot at second place is Rhea Silvia Mons. When we say coming, we really mean so. You see, this mountain is not on a planet, but an asteroid. Even weirder, it's not a mountain, but an impact crater. Over 300 miles in diameter. The crater is almost as wide as the entire asteroid. That must have been one powerful collision. Now, I'm not talking about the distance from the mountain's base to its top. No, I'm talking about the distance from the base of the crater to its peak. That's one giant hole. You can fit two Mount Everests inside it and still have room to spare. The Mega Mountain is 1 billion years old. And the impact that created the crater scattered debris all over the solar system. And a lot of it ended up on our planet. 5% of all space rocks we find on Earth come from this asteroid. Now it's time to roll out the red carpet. Our solar system's largest mountain is Olympus Mons. Its home planet? None other than Mars. And what about that record-breaking height? Bear with me, close to 72,000 feet. That's uh, 30 times as tall as the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building on our planet. And the total size of this giant? Well, the square footage would match the state of Arizona. Olympus Mons would be the ideal navigation tool. You just can't miss it on the horizon. But it is a gentle giant. The average slope of its flanks is six times lower than that of the escalator at your local mall. Once at the top, you'll see nothing but a red, rocky desert for miles around. Other Martian volcanoes in the area are huge as well. On average, they're 10 to 100 times bigger than Earth's largest volcanoes. But how did these mountains get so big? Well, unlike our volcanoes, the Martian ones don't move. You see, Mars doesn't have tectonic plates. On Earth, those plates move like a conveyor belt, as fast as our fingernails grow. This is how mountain ranges and islands are formed here. But on Mars, lava is always going to spew out at the same place. So their volcanoes, such as the reigning champion Olympus Mons, grow in size over time. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.